Hey everybody, my name is Scott Colby and welcome to The Grateful Entrepreneur, an online summit all about growing your business with gratitude. Now during the summer, I'm gonna be interviewing entrepreneurs and leaders about the power of gratitude, appreciation, giving, and customer experience to help you grow your business. Today, I'm interviewing Mike Carrillo. <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. the last name. Now, Mike is a Tempe, Arizona-based entrepreneur and the founder of AutoshopFollowUp.com, a company that helps automotive shops increase customer retention through deepening relationships with their customers with personalized communications. AutoShop Follow-Up was later acquired by Fetch Rev in May of 2017, where Mike now serves as the head of growth. FetchRev is a Tempe-based startup whose software specializes in customer retention and driving repeat foot traffic. Uh, you can find out more about Mike's uh, businesses over at autoshopfollowup.com and fetchrev.com. Mike, welcome. Thank you for Thank being you. here. I appreciate you uh, having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, you know, Mike, I, I learned about AutoShop Follow-Up from just reading an article about what you guys were doing online. I forgot, I didn't pull up the article before this interview, so I forgot which one exactly it was, but I have it bookmarked. And when I saw what you were doing and the kind of success that you were getting for your clientele with thank you cards and, and follow-up phone calls, I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly the type of information I want to bring to my audience. Like, how do you build your business through deepening connection. So I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for being here. And I want to go back to the kind of the beginning of auto, up, uh, auto shop follow up. What led you to start that company? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when, um, when I first went out, I actually, we, we started out as an answering service. So we were an overflow answering service, which is kind of goofy how we landed into the world of uh, follow up. Uh, but we would take overflow calls for small businesses, kind of like an offsite administrative, right? So we were doing that, and through the course of doing business, we had a we had an auto shop that had come on, um, and the owner was saying, "Hey, you know, appreciate you guys answering all these inbound phone calls. What another thing we could really use help with is outbound phone calls and following up just to make sure that people feel satisfied, um, as well as sending out thank you cards to customers." And I said, "You know, we we could definitely try that." Um, so we decided to kind of pioneer it with him and, and start. Uh, start performing some of these services and doing some of these phone calls and basically through the course of doing business the bottom line impact that it had on his business was went far above and beyond anything that we thought was going to happen um, through just a couple things taking the time to find out what people thought right and getting uh, getting unbiased accurate feedback of people's experience um, and then also just taking the time to say thank you in like a really honest way um, that isn't self-serving uh, so and that was kind of the trick so we started doing these calls and uh, and providing this service for them and over the course of about 18 months we dropped his attrition rate from he was about a 42 percent attrition rate down to uh, down to 12 we actually dipped into the like 11 six for a little bit there which was exciting right. but we talked about about 12 percent well uh, and, and the scale of, of an auto shop is a massive massive impact yeah, that's incredible. And, and as small business owners, I mean, that is so key is retention. I mean, it is easier. There's, there's um, like, like you guys have proven, it's easier to retain customers if you have a system versus always going out and trying to find those new customers and bring them yeah. in. That's a little bit more costly. And I, I mean, I can really relate to this because I've never had an auto shop follow up with me. Um, you know, same thing with doctors and dentists. Normally, if I get anything right. in the mail from them, it's like, all right, it's time to make your next appointment. And it's right. like, really- They might send you a coupon for the next time you do business with them, but they're not yeah. gonna say thank you for the previous time. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's often missed and that's, that's it's so key um, really to any small business. And, and I get it, like I get the struggle because having, I mean, I was also the person who needed customers, right? And, and so I understand new business is sexy. It's more fun uh, to bring in new customers and to see that new customer growth. And it's necessary, right? So hear me there. That being said, taking the time to make sure that your back door is shut um, is absolutely paramount if you're ever going to get past that first space. Okay. Um, and I also remember when I bought my first car, it was a Honda Accord, and the saleswoman um, that I did business with 
every year she would send me a birthday card and that I absolutely loved. I actually moved away from the area so I couldn't buy my next car from her, yeah. but I would have had I remained in that area. And that's, that's how much an annual birthday card meant to me. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Really cool what you guys are doing. Okay, so I really want to kind of dig into what you guys were doing at Auto Shop Follow Up um, and get into some of your of our specifics here as far as when you send cards, how often, yeah. and things like that. So let's start with the cards um, and just kind of go down the line. Like when do you send out cards? Who do you send the cards to and what do you say in them? Yeah, so what we would do is we would always send out all of our thank you cards the week after a visit. Um, so there was there's a few things. So you want it you want it close enough to where um, to where they still remember, right? You don't want to. Is a lot of times we plan on doing things and then it kind of gets it on the back burner, and you know you send out a hundred thank you cards at the end of the month because you just forgot. You do want to make sure it's timely and consistent. So that's a big thing is making sure it happens. Uh, it happens consistently and it happens quickly after after you've interacted with the customer, whatever capacity that is. Um, the but the main tip that I have in terms of the research we've done with thank you cards and content um, is just say thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first question I always get from customers is, hey, can we stick a coupon in there? Hey, can we do a 10% you know, off your next visit? And I always say, I would say yes, you can. Um, but the consumer is just like you. And if you get a card that says, hey, thank you so much for supporting us. We appreciate the trust that you place on us as an organization. Um, that makes you feel like, wow, hey, thank you for doing that. As soon as you see, hey, 10% off your next visit, you're like, oh, I see with this. I mean, it's still good. It still feels great. You know, like, it still feels like a thank you, but at the end of the day, it was for pushing me to really just get back in the door again. And so it kind of becomes immediately self-serving. So that's one of those things I always really encourage people to err on the side of just saying thank you because people just aren't used to it. Um, it can take a very small amount of gratitude to make such a massive impact uh, on your customer because customers aren't used to receiving gratitude. Uh, they aren't used to being appreciated and thanked, especially in a way that's real and tangible to them. Mm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I interviewed somebody else that specializes in sending out thank you cards, and they were like, "Do not um, put in your business card in there because as soon yeah. as you, it kind of takes that human element out of it. I mean, it of course, you are humanizing it in that you are sending a, a handwritten thank you card, but then you're making it a little bit too corporatey, I think, or salesy, yeah. like something in there like uh, a business card. You know, you wouldn't send your mom a, a birthday card and put in your business card in there. So kind of yep. treat your customers and your clients like family and friends and, and kind of mimic what you would do with a really good friend or your best friend. Yep, absolutely. And, and then, um, so you would send out a thank you card after a, a customer did business with you. And then would you send one again later on in the year or multiple times during the year? Yeah, so I think it depends on the use case sometimes and maybe the type of business that you have. Uh, when we look at kind of specifically the automotive vertical, um, you're talking at about just under two visits a year on average is what the, the number of times they see their customer. So I think having a pulse on what that is, if you're used to seeing a customer on a monthly basis and they, you haven't seen them for three months, it might be time to send something. Um, and we've done handwritten, hey, we just haven't seen you in a while. We just, uh, you know, that type of car can have a really, a really strong impact as well. Um, but typically for us, it would be the week after their visit. Um, if we, if the shop hadn't seen them in about seven or eight months, they know, okay, they probably went somewhere else for an oil change, right? And now the cars go longer and longer without them. Some of those things are changing a little bit, but understanding what that normal cycle looks like for your customer and your customer base and understanding when to hit them with that card is pretty important. Um, so yes, the immediate thank you after they've been in um, and definitely, definitely love the kind of what we used to call the, the lost customer reactivation um, type card where it's, hey, we haven't seen you in a little bit. We would love a chance to serve you again. Um, and some of those things you can help offset and keep that from happening by sending out the initial card, right? Expressing that gratitude in the front. Hopefully that keeps them from becoming the lost customer on the back. Um, as well as phone calls and pairing it, I think pairing it with a phone call and getting real, real um, unbiased feedback um, from your customer base is, I would argue, is, is equally as important. Awesome. I'm glad you transitioned phone calls because that's what I wanted to ask next. I mean, a, a lot of people are afraid, uh, you know, to pick up the phone. It's not yeah. easy for people to do. Um, it takes time. They're not comfortable with it. They, they might be scared of what the uh, other person may say. 
but let's talk about the phone call. When did you make the calls? Who did you call? Um, and what did you say during the call? Yeah, absolutely. So for us, our policy and what we encouraged our shops to do was every customer every time. Um, and, and we used to segment the customers a little bit more. So we would have a um, customer came in uh, for an appointment and then we would call them back um, within, you know, we usually say within a week, there's, there's kind of a philosophy out there, the three day callback. Um, personally, from what I've seen, at least within doing this for obviously a number of different customers, uh, as long as it's within the following week and they still have a fresh memory of their visit, I haven't found much of an impact difference in terms of that. So if you're killing yourself to make a three day dial back, you're you can be okay of getting them on four or five um and then in terms of the actual call itself um there's a few things that we recommend for one if you can have it be from somebody they didn't interact with the better the better off you're going to be and it sounds a little goofy but the thing is is if most people we live in a fairly passive aggressive society i think most people would agree with me you're much more likely to see a negative review on yelp than have a customer walk up to you and say hey i didn't like this um, so what we always say is, for one, call them with somebody that they're not dealing with and that they don't necessarily have to see the next time because they have less skin in the game. So for one, you're going to be able to be less emotional about it. Um, two, the other piece is customers are going to be a lot more open and honest with somebody when they don't feel like they're critiquing their service in particular, right? So in the, in the case of the automotive industry, if, if you come in and your service writer is who you're working with, so if, if you're not from the automotive industry, that's just the person at the front counter who sells you your service. Um, writes up your ticket, takes your payment, helps coordinate all that. If you didn't really love the service that you got from your service writer and then that person calls you back and says, hey, how did everything go? You're going to say, uh, it was fine, thanks. And you're just <laughs> never going to call that customer again, right? Because you're not going to dive into it with that person as to why they didn't meet your expectations. So that's always one um, is if you can have somebody else who didn't call, deal with them dial, you'll be a lot better off. Um, two, try to keep it conversational. Um, because again, the main, the main thing we're after here is building relationship, um, and surveys don't build relationships. So if you're going to call and you're going to call down a script and say, Hey, can I, can I call and can I ask you a few questions? You'll automatically <laughs> customers feel like they're on trial. It's like, okay, well this is now me giving feedback on a survey and not relationship building. But if I said, Hey Scott, I saw you had your report in for an oil change last week. I just want to call and follow up and make sure everything's running. Okay. Is it, how did everything go when you're in the shop? Hmm. Right. It's just start a conversation. Um, and so for, for my guys, I would have them tape a number of like, like open ended questions on their monitor of things just to get people talking, just, um, talking about what their experience was like. Hey, you know, would you recommend it to a friend, right? So there are different things like that that you can, that you can ask to really get the, get the customer talking about how their experience was. Um, and then just take notes from that. Just take it down for what it is. Get them talking about what's important to them. Because that's the other piece is a survey is going to focus on the, the segments of your business that you want to know more information about. What a lot of times what we need to hear is what is important to the customer? Where are we missing the mark in their eyes? So by not leading the conversation too much and letting them drive to what that is, you'll actually find out a lot more about your business. I, I love that you mentioned that um, have somebody that didn't interact with the customer do the, the phone call. That's kind of counterintuitive, but I understand what you mean now. They're going to be more likely to be honest and be open with a yeah. person than they interacted with. Um, so you're basically doing the, the follow-up call around the same time as a thank you card, right? Within a, within yeah. a week. Within the same week. So they may get the card first, they may get the call first. And um, from what we've seen, it, it, it doesn't, in terms of just general customer satisfaction scores, um, it doesn't really change much in terms of when that arrives. Um, but we have found uh, significantly higher retention rates in terms of actually doing a handwritten thank you card. Um, so that definitely does make a massive boost. And, and then I know you guys were big on getting um, your customers to write reviews. Yeah. To write online reviews. So talk a little bit about that. Are you, are you asking them outright to write a review during the phone conversation or how did that work? Yeah, it is. And that's, that's a, um, you know, it's a little bit of a dance in terms of you don't want the customers feeling like you're calling for a self-serving reason of saying, Oh, Hey, how was everything? By the way, can you leave a review? <laughs> right. You can do it in a really negative way that can leave a bad taste in their mouth. But if, if you can, you can call in and you can talk about their experience. Um, and the way that we would pivot to it is for one, we gave our callers a lot of discretion. This is not, there was never a note around, Hey, you better get this many reviews per day. This is not about that. Right? It's about figuring out what is the customer experience. 
Um, but then if we had that person who was on the line and they were just like, oh man, we love you guys. Um, I love Mike at the front counter. He's always so helpful when we come in. We also felt like it was kind of a wasted opportunity to not ask. Um, so the way that we would go about asking is after you shared a really strong experience, we would say, hey, you know what? We grow our business through referrals from customers like you. Um, and a lot of that's through kind of our online presence. I really appreciate what you just shared with me. If I sent you a link to our Google page, do you think you'd be able to share online what you shared with me? That would be a massive help for us. Mm. Um, and so in, in more of a, it's an asking for help. Everybody wants to be in a position to help, right? If, you have, if somebody comes up to you and asks for your assistance in something, you're going to go out of your way nine times out of 10 to do that. Um, and so it's just asking for help. Hey, look, this is how we grow our business. You had an awesome experience. We'd love to share that experience with other people if you'd be up for helping us. And we had, we had a great, great response to that. Yeah, and you mentioned referrals, and I was, actually I was going to ask you that. You know, you, you've documented that the thank you card and the phone calls have increased retention. Have you documented anything where you are getting an increase in the number of referrals? Yeah, so we had a number of customers who um, had programs in place where we would actually send out, um, you know, if they, if they sent a referral, we'd send out some movie tickets or things like that. Some of them had more tangible referral um, programs. You know, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know if, if I opened an auto shop tomorrow, I don't know if I would put in a specific program or not. Um, I saw some shops that had really, really great success with it, and I saw other ones where if your retention is so good that your customers know they're coming back, they're referring you customers. Yeah. So if you, if you get to that point where you have that raving fan, that individual doesn't need incentive to send you uh, referrals. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, yeah. And I wish I had a little bit more of a straight opinion to give you and my thoughts on the matter, but um, I think if you're doing it right on the front end, you don't necessarily need that, at least from a standpoint of advertising. Recognizing it, 100% paramount, right? And you want to send the thank you card when they send you a referral. You want to send them something in the mail saying thank you when they send you a referral. You want to recognize it, whether or not you have like a specific program with the register saying, hey, if you send us a referral, we'll send you X in the mail. You know, I would say I could go either way on that. Yeah, you know, and I, I agree, you know, if, if you have a great experience at, at a restaurant, you like the service, you like the food, you're going to post it on Facebook or, or um, right. you know, post it on Instagram or the next time somebody asks, hey, I'm looking for an Italian restaurant in, in uh, Tempe, Arizona. Do you have a recommendation? If you've had that good experience, you're going to post or, or share that experience with your friend. It doesn't have to be in a formal referral program so i definitely yeah. the businesses that i'm excited about doing business with don't need any help right? right i'm 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 excited to tell you about it and that's that's really the kind of culture that that we were striving to drive for our customers and then what were there any specific way you were tracking retention like you know you mentioned how the one um company that you the one auto shop that you started with uh, with this system had an increase in, in the retention by a certain percentage. Was there a specific way that you track that or that you track that now? So at the, at the time, most, most of the point of sale providers would, would track those types of attrition rates and they have, their, um, they have that pre set up. So depending on the industry that you're in and what your point of sale is, if you're using like a generic square, you probably have to do some, um, some sort of tracking on your own, um, yeah. which doesn't have to be that difficult, right? Actually, if you Google it, it's probably the easiest way to figure out kind of that formula in terms of figuring out how many times per year your average customer comes in, what their average spend is, and then you can kind of work that back to figure out, okay, what is, how long is the customer have to be gone before it's considered lost? Um, so you can do that math and figure that out on the back end. Typically though, if you have some sort of a CRM um, or point of sale system that's tracking that for you, those should be built into your reporting. And if it's not, you can actually reach out to those providers. And we've, we had a number of them at it um, as a result because it's, it isn't something, retention is not something that people focus on um, enough. Uh, and so therefore it's not always necessarily baked into those reports as cleanly as we would like it to be. Um, but that's where I would start. Yeah, and I wanna go back to the phone call follow-up. I meant to ask, um, do you all just do the one follow-up within the week or are you calling them again throughout the year or does it depend if they show up back at the, uh, the auto shop? Yeah, so we, we would call pretty much every time. Um, and so we, we would call every time they had a visit. Um, we would do, if they set a pre-appointment, we would do appointment reminder calls, um, lost, re, lost customer reactivation calls if you haven't been in in like 10, 11 months. 
um, we would make dials for those too. So there's a number of different use cases, and, and I would say, you know, you got to be careful about how many times you're reaching out a customer because no matter what your business is, your customer doesn't think about it as much as you do. Um, so you always got to be you got to be kind of tactful with that. Um, but that being said, we used to have a rule in place where we would say, okay, if a customer came in this month and they show up again on the next month list. So say they came in twice in 30 days. And in an auto shop, that's fairly unusual unless there's a problem. So what we used to do is say, hey, if they're in 30 days, let's not inundate them with phone calls. Let's not, you know, we'll just, we'll only dial the first time and then we'll give them a pass on the second time. Mm. Well, what happened is, well, if you're coming back to your auto shop for the second time in 30 days, most likely something went wrong the first time. Um, and then we had some negative reviews start going uh, up online of people saying, hey, um, you know, I went to the shop and I had this issue. And we're like, whoa, we actually, we could have prevented that if we had just called the second time as well and said, now we know, hey, you came in twice in a row, you may have had an issue that needs addressing. And so that was one of the things that we adjusted as we went on realizing, you know, we need to err on the side of over communication. Um, because that's one of the strong pieces too that's often overlooked is you can stop negative reviews before they happen by just giving people a chance to either one vent, sometimes that's what they need. Nine times out of ten is a misunderstanding. You know, especially when you're dealing with something like automobiles where everybody's already nervous, nobody quite understands what's going on. They're having to give the owner a lot of trust um, and they want to feel like they want to feel like they can trust them. Um, so you have to build that rapport with the customer in order to have that. And so I think the, the second call is absolutely paramount. So, yeah, we there. I think there's a lot of different times you can call. I, I think if I were to say one thing um, in terms of not wanting to overwhelm your customers with it is be careful with text. Um, texting is a extremely private means of communication. Um, and I think that there's a lot of businesses that are starting to look at it like this is, hey, here's the email workaround. Uh, emails don't get open to everybody reads text messages. You also will drive massive unsubscribe rates on your text messaging. If you're not careful, this is very personal communication. So erring on the side of a phone call or a thank you card um, is gonna be a lot stronger. Yeah, I, I like to tell my audience, I a handwritten thank you card is going to get open 100% of the time. Every time. Every time. And, and that's what we love about it is it's, it's pretty much a guaranteed placement. Like you can send a postcard and you don't know that that's not going to just get swept out. With right. Yeah. Right. But a thin, handwritten thank you card, everybody gets a little bit excited to get a piece of handwritten mail from a human. So it always gets opened. Yeah. I interviewed somebody else this morning. And she's like, it's like a, it's like a, um, a smile in your mailbox. 100%. <laughs> Everything else is bills and junk. <laughs> yep, exactly. But everybody loves a handwritten card. Yeah. So, Mike, you know, we t we've talked about auto shop follow up, and I'm I'm certain that the same strategies of phone calls and thank you notes work well with dentists and doctors, Absolutely. chiropractors, and other industries. Have you worked with those other types of industries? Yeah. So we've worked with a number of different industries. I mean, like dent dentists is a dental is a big one. Um, is, a, is a great place for follow-up cards. Um, there's, so I'm trying to think, family entertainment centers, we've worked with them. Uh, we're pretty heavy within health and beauty, so massage, um, things like that. So auto shop follow-up is specifically our automotive brand, um, but we do, it does, it works phenomenally in, in a number of different industries. Um, so these same things can be applied across the board, even though, you know, I'm wearing an auto shop followup.com shirt. Uh, there's, there's a, pretty much most industries can benefit from this type of follow-up. Uh, putting this type of a system in place. And, and then, you know, you mentioned the auto shop follow-up got uh, bought out, or I guess I, I mentioned yeah. it in the intro, um, by FetchRev. What does FetchRev do? Yeah, so FetchRev is a software platform that uh, really works with small businesses to help drive more return foot traffic and repeat revenue, so in a really trackable way. Um, so whereas uh, the auto shop follow-up portion of it is really geared around uh, human phone calls and handwritten human thank you cards. This is the software platform that goes along with that and really works with your email database and social media where if you're um, if you're sending out maybe just your kind of generic cost of contact or MailChimp newsletter um, and you're sending that out on a weekly basis and you're thinking like what does this do for me? Um, that's what FetchRef does. Is we're going to give some teeth to that email marketing plan, give you trackability, um, and really do the same thing. It's just about building that relationship with the customer and the channel that they want to communicate with you, right offer, right person, right time. So it's really, it's all the same kind of same principles. Um, it's just working on more of that electronic channel as opposed to uh, the phone and direct mail. 
and, and probably the sweet spot is to do both, right? To, to work. Well, and that's, yep. And that's exactly how we kind of came to be. Right. So that's, uh, it's, it's all the strength in, in doing it consistently across the board is huge. So you're still, are you still doing the kind of the, the handwritten thank you card component and the, the yep. Uh, yep. Component? handwritten phone card component, the uh, telephone calls, okay. um, as well as the software platform, just really all working hand in hand now. Awesome. Well, that sounds like a great partnership. So I wanted to congratulate you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's super exciting. I definitely am pumped to be here and, and love FetchRev. Cool. Well, Mike, um, yeah, we just want to wrap this up. Thank you so much for being here. I mean, uh, like I said at the beginning, you are doing it right. I think more businesses need to be sending out thank you cards and calling up their, their customers, getting to know them on a personal level, deepening that connection, cultivating the relationships. And when you do that, and when you see your customers as people and not as dollar signs, you're automatically going to grow your business through retention and referral. So you're doing it right. And I want to thank you for being here and sharing with my audience how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure. I appreciate the invite. I was excited to be here. And definitely, and I want to make it clear that it's, you don't need to hire an outside service to do this for you. Um, you really absolutely can implement this tomorrow in your own business in an affordable way that's going to drive tangible results back in your door. It's absolutely hands down worth doing and putting it in place. Uh, I'm always available. I mean, anyone can get me at Mike at FetchRev.com. Um, if you've got any questions about your program um, or just how to implement it or uh, anything, I'm, I'm always happy to help. I, I love to network and connect with folks. So if I can help in any way, I'm happy to do so. But thank you again. I appreciate it very much. It was excited to be here. Awesome. Everybody watching, thank you for tuning in to this interview with Mike and learning more about how to grow your business with phone calls and thank you cards in a, a systemized way. I think you, everybody should implement that in your business. Um, until next time, we'll see you back here with another interview for the Grateful Entrepreneur Summit. Bye, everybody.